Hi. Hi. My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I have been solving math problems that you will find in this book, the official SAT study guides, uh, study guide rather. It has eight exams. Each exam has three math sections. The problem that I'm about to solve appears in the last exam, exam number eight, the very last exam, section number five, <coughs> page 860, question number 19. This particular section has 20 questions, excuse me. <coughs> I'm sorry. This question has 20 questions. This is question number 19, which means it's supposed to be a hard question. And as I have said many times before, if you've been watching my clips, as I have said many times before, a hard question on the SAT is not hard because it involves very complicated math, but because it involves some kind of thinking that an average person is either too lazy to do or is just not able to do it, one or the other. But, but, but the math itself is very straightforward. Let's take a look at it. And what I mean by average person is too lazy to do is that an average person, let's give him a name, let's call him the average Joe, average person looks for a quick answer. He's looking for, he or she reads the problem, they, they, they see the answer, that jumps at them, and they, they are happy with that. They don't stop to think, why in the world would this be so simple if, if it's number 20? Why, would it, why in the world would it be number 19 or number 20 if it were that simple? You can't pick the first answer that jumps at you. That's the sucker's answer. You have to think. There are always trap answers, answers that are too tempting. In the picture above, so I'm going to draw the picture first. Let's see if I can do a decent job of it. So here we go. And then I have, I have my line. Goes like this. Look at, look at the picture in your book. Okay, this is not a straight line. It's sometimes it's difficult to make a straight line because this thing is slippery. Yeah, a little bit better. There you go, that's your picture. That's all we know. In the picture above, if the legs of triangle ABC are parallel to the axis, as we can see, this leg of the triangle is parallel to x-axis, and that leg of the triangle is parallel to y-axis. For those of you who are having trouble understanding this leg thing, they're calling this, let's, let's give this vertex an A, or actually they call it C. So, B to C is one leg of the triangle. Legs are usually referred to as the two sides of a right angle triangle. So that is not, not a hypotenuse. See, this is a right angle triangle, this is a hypotenuse, AB is hypotenuse, so the other two are referred to usually as the two legs. Leg AC is parallel to this x-axis, and the leg BC is parallel to y-axis. That's what they're talking about. Which of the following could be the length of the sides of triangle ABC? All right, so they given five scenarios to us, and the question is, which of these five could be the, these two legs? So what I need to figure out here is the ratio of these two legs, the ratio of this to that, and then look for the same ratio. And how do I find the ratio of the change in x to the change in y? What do we call that ratio? Actually, I just said the reciprocal of it, but you get the idea. That ratio is referred to as the slope. Let's find the slope of this line. This is, this is what they call, they're calling it O. Let's give this point a name. I'm going to call it I'm going to call it point D, or uh, point P, O, P. So, the slope slope of line AB has to equal the change in Y over the change in X. And the two points that I'm going to use are O for, for the origin and this P. So the change in Y is simply 10 over 4. You see? It's 
10 minus 0, 10 minus 0, which is the change in y, and then change in x is 4 minus 0. That's it. Which tells me that the ratio of the two, two legs, this and that, has to be 2 to 5. For example, if the change from here to here is 2, then the change from here to here has to be 5. This change has to be 5. So if I find a scenario that works there, 2, 2 to 5 out of the 5 other choices, that's great. Let's take a look at it. There you go, A has 2 and 5, so that works. B has 2 and 5, that works. Now C has 3 and 3, that's a ratio of 1 to 1. That's not going to work. A ratio of 1 to 1, the 3 units change in X and a 3 units change in Y. If this were 3 and that were 3, that would mean the slope of the line OP is 1. No, slope is not 1. As you can clearly see, the slope is 10 over 4, 5 seconds, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5 over 2. That's not it. C, so C is not it. Neither is D. D gives me a slope of 3 quarter. If this change were 3 and that were 4, that will be 3 quarter. Or rather, not 3 quarter, 4 third. Change in Y over change in X. Anyway, the point is it's not, it's not 5 over 2. I need this change to be 5 and this to be 10. So A works and B works and if I have something else which has a ratio of 10 to 4, that would work. The last one is 4 to 5. That doesn't work. Not only that, but you can see if if the if 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 this if this leg were four, if this were four, since if this were four, it has to be noise. This is not going to work. It's, it's it's not. We're looking for a ratio of five to two. So the answer is either A and B. I'm making it too complicated for no reason. When I try to explain too much, it gets too complicated. I I should stop. Doing, I, I should stop doing that. But as I told you before, I, I really don't know who I'm dealing with. When I'm dealing with face-to-face -face private tutoring, I know the ability of the students and I can adjust my lecture uh, accordingly uh, based on the needs of the student. Right now I have no idea how, how good you are in math, so I, I try to explain too much. But anyway, it's either this or that. All I have to figure out is what is the hypotenuse here. If this is 2 and this is 5, it's going to be 2 squared plus 5 squared. The square root of that. And that's going to be... 4 plus 5, 25, so it's going to be, it has to be 2, 5, and the square root of 29. Answer is A. It's not B. Because if this is 2 and this is 5, that has to be 2 squared plus 5 squared, the square root of, the square root of 2 squared plus 5 squared, which is square root of 29. The answer is A. Because B makes no sense. You cannot have 2, 5, and 7. That's a, that's a Joe answer. That's a sucker answer. People who have been careless. That's about it. Send me an email, post comments on the YouTube, on my channel. If you wish to get the videos right away as soon as I upload them, subscribe to my channel and get hold of me through email at www.prepforsat.com. Uh, if you wish to hire my services for personal tutoring, private tutoring, or if you wish to purchase the DVDs, or if you need the books, either the vocabulary book or the official SAT guide. Thank you.